Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in his living room with the Nano Little Evo from Fluval and it's a right mess. Now what's happened with this little setup is now I've been away for a couple of days, about three days, and a turbo snail has decided to uh, to die on me and he's created a lot of uh, a lot of nitrates and a lot of phosphate build up in the water with these little body decaying away in the water so what we're going to have to do is clean this system up and as you can see there's lots of flowing algae on the side of the glass here some on this on the on, on the actual front panel of the glass as well as on the the weir side of the pump as well so um we're gonna have to get that all off now luckily we put that phosphate remover in there um, the skimmer's been working overtime, doing a fantastic job of cleaning out everything as well, the extra proteins and things in the water, and um, and looking after that side of things. But we've got this hair algae. Now, if you look at it, it's white on the side. Now, it's grown, but that phosphate remover, as it's grown as well, the phosphate remover is, is getting rid of that nutrient in the water, and it's depriving it of nutrients, and it's dying off by itself. But it's still le leaving the white film and that flowing little filamentaceous um, algae all over the place and so we're gonna to have to scrape it all off and what I'm going to use to do it is the guys from flipper have kindly sent me one of these little nano flippers um, a couple of weeks ago and it's worked out absolutely fantastic timing to clean this little tank up I was going to introduce this to you guys I'm not sure if it's available in the UK yet but it's a super little bit of kit and it takes the credit cards but instead of the wider one which we've got in the coral room um, it takes the credit cards that way so you can probably you can just snip one in half and then just slide that in there and you can have the two edges and you can clean your glass up and I'll show you how well this little guy works in a minute I'm sure you might be able to get them on uh, on uh, Amazon if you can I'll put a, f a link in the description below so you can pick yourself up one of these little guys and they've also sent me a little nano deep sea look at that one of the little viewers they got the big I think they're not sure if they got the big six inch one out and the one in between which we've got in the coral room as well which I'll show you I'll take you for a little walk I think through the um, through the coral room after this little clean up and show you what I've got in and uh, some of you guys might be interested in that so everything's growing lovely in there but we've got one of those so we can, when this is all nice and clean we can check this guy out and we can get some lovely clarity and nice shots and he's a fantastic for uh, photography as well guys so um, I think they'll go up to um, 20 gallons or less it says for this one because of the actual magnification size obviously when you're looking into the tank but we'll get into that in a minute but I think what we're gonna have to do first is we're going to have to clean this tank up. So I'm going to have to open this little guy up, which I haven't done yet. See, the cat can play with that. And also on that side as well, you've got a little pad. Look at that, a nice little pad. Now these are good for acrylic or glass. So you can scrape it off. And I'll just go down in the top there now and I'll show you how well these little guys work. You'll soon start to see everything getting a lot cleaner and clearer. Look at that, it's peeling that off absolutely wonderfully. Look at that. And I've got a couple of little mullet in here as well. I thought I'd put them in and they're going to be a great little clean-up crew. When they get a little bit bigger, we can take them out and release those guys back into the sea, which I'm going to do next summer when they're a bit too big. And then I can get some more little baby ones and bring them on as little algae cleaners. I use them in the coral room to keep everything nice and nice and algae free. As, as we all know, mullet like to eat absolutely er anything and everything. Fabulous little guys for cleaning up they are. Look at that. That is doing a splendid job. And the great thing is about credit cards is we've all got them, <laughs> sadly. And, um, and when they run out, or your debit cards or yeah, store cards or anything like that, you can just put them in here and you've got an everlasting free supply of scrapers. Look at that. Doing a wonderful job, that is. Everything looking a bit clearer to you now, I would have thought. I'm watching the tank. You're watching the camera. But that is brilliant. And those mullet are going to go along. If I actually come out of there now, and I'll leave it for a minute, put this on a towel out of the way, um, and the little mullet might come out and you'll see them eating all those little particles little particulate matter which is floating around in the water they'll eat all that out of the algae bits that we scraped off which is going to be very good for them as soon as they start tasting that they'll be racing around in no time at all well they decided to be very shy if you look right down in the back of the cave there you can see two little heads poking out <laughs> and they're uh, 
they're waiting for me to disappear now. I've spooked them a little bit. But if you look at the corals, a lot of the pulsing, um, the pulsing xenia up there as well, and the green star polyps, and a few of the other things are starting to retract because as you scrape off the uh, that biofilm off the glass, it's food, and it will feed all of your tanks. So don't go uh, too mad straight away trying to get things out. Leave everything have a good feed. It's good for your tank, and um, and everything will stay a little bit healthier. All the little tube worms and different things here are putting out their little slimy tentacles to catch whatever they can in the water so they can have a little feed as well we've got quite a bit of build up on the gravel here as well and obviously this side as well so what I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you that a little bit I'll just take some of that look I'm going to scrape some of that off the side of the air as well just to show you how efficient these little guys are and because they're nice and soft as well you haven't got to go too too hard with it and it's not going to scrape all your your coralline algae off which is uh, which some people like I like it so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get back to you guys when I've cleaned this right up we've given it a water change and it's looking a little bit tidier and we can have a little chat for a couple of minutes just about what's been going on in the tank and what else I'm going to put in it Right guys, what I thought I'd do, i just show you a little bit of what I've been doing because um, I know a lot of you guys are following this um, this little project along and uh, you've bought, a lot of you guys have bought these tanks as well and you've been uh, putting pictures up and different things on my Facebook group of your new tanks and your new rockscapes. Some of you have got to get back to about questions you've asked as well but uh, I'm pretty busy at the moment with the shop running and we're trying to get all these little YouTube vids out for you as well so you'll have to bear with me while I get back to you okay but what I've done so far is just raked around in the substrate a little bit like you saw me do on the other one not hoovered it got rid of all that rubbish put it up into the water then I've sucked it all out with my um, my bit of hose pipe okay turkey based it all round in the rocks like I did before blowing out any little pockets of debris which have formed over time where the pumps and the power heads and things move the debris around and it will settle in little pockets that's why sometimes it's nice just to get your little power head and just point it at a different angle and then point it up a bit down a bit and it just changes that water current or you can have it on a random pulse with this one which pulses different ways and different time limits and um, I think the make is I think it's a Jabo. I'm not sure of the model but it's the smallest one that Jabo or Jcod does and they're great little pumps You've got different wave uh, functions on them, pulses, feed times, everything else. And they're fantastic little guys for these little tanks, they really are. They work extremely well. Now some things have been doing great in here and other things not as good. And this is why I like to do these little tanks. Now the Pacillopora, which are these little SPS corals here and up the top, they've actually bleached out, oops, sorry. They've actually bleached out a little bit with that light. Um, so it just shows you how powerful these little lights are, okay? And obviously they're not dimmable, so you can't turn the lights down, okay? And you can either only you can only have the blue light or the actual main lights on at any one time. You can't have you can't. There's no dimming um, possibility on these little on these little lamps, which is a shame. They could have put a little dimmer on there, which would have been nice. Um, the Montiporas, very slow growing. The light's not intense enough for them and they tend to have gone a little bit more duller green than that lovely vibrant green when I first put them in there. And that's just down to the creating more of the zooxanthellae. They're taking on more of that algae into their tissue to create more food for them, OK? Because they're not getting the sufficient light and to create the amount of food that they need, OK? So that's the... Uh, so they're not doing too, too bad. But they are growing slowly but surely. They are, they are growing. Recordias are doing well, they've split up. If you notice, I've taken a couple of little bits out here from the front. And that's the awesome thing about having your own shop. You can go out there and grab some new bits and put them in. So that's what we're going to do on this little video as well. Now you can see the um, the green star polyp there has retracted right up. And it's just started, it's just put a little branch out onto the back of that weir. I'm not sure if you can see it there. I'll just take you over the top there. You can just see right at the back there, there's that little little tongue which it looks like just touching just about there it is now that's going to start to spread up the glass and look very nice in a few months time but as we all know it's patience with these little tanks and that's what you need if you haven't got patience don't go down the marine route because 
things take time but over a couple of years they will look absolutely fantastic with a little bit of gardening like I'm doing just moving things if it's too high it's getting too much light move it down lower or if things need more light obviously move them up higher SPS corals would need more light LPS corals more of a mid-range to the bottom and obviously your, all your, your mushrooms and your polyps and your different zoas and things are happy further down in the colony but they will take stronger light as well so um, you can try little bits here and there keep them on little rocks and prop them up in different areas just to see how they go you'll soon see if they start spreading you can leave them alone if they start retracting or they're not don't look at, they're not looking too happy you can move them around and try somewhere different so that's what I thought I'd show you so I thought what I'd do now is go out and we're gonna get a couple of good nice corals out of the uh, out of my shop and we'll put them in and see what they look like okay guys right what I've put in there I've got some stunning um, zoa little colonies well they're not little colonies they're quite big colonies which came from Vietnam last week and they are absolutely stunning they are they're beautiful red don't look much now under this white light but when the blue lights come on they absolutely explode they really do and I've also got some recordia humors here as well which are a lovely light metallic green with beautiful little red centers in them and as again they don't look brilliant at the moment i've just put that piece there just rested it up against there so we've made that little cave a little bit smaller there because i want that will create a wall now of recordias here and as those zoas start to spread and with that red there and let me just twist you around and the green star polyps there as they start creeping along that green and that red is really going to pop lovely together okay given time so um I think we'll leave it at that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this another water change now. I'm just going to suck out some of the debris which is in there. I'll just give you a better angle there. There you go. Now you can see what it looks like. And um, I'll suck some of this water out. Give it another quick. I'll probably drop it down about 50% this time. And then we'll put a fresh big bucket of water in there. And, um, and we'll let it run for a couple of hours. And then we'll get back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Oh, well there guys there you go we've uh, it's all finished all finished for the day lovely little cleaning job done that little nano scraper from flipper is absolutely a fantastic little tool i suggest you go and get one of those guys they're absolutely uh, brilliant little tools for cleaning up as you can see it's done a really nice clean job all around the place and um i've got the flipper magnifier now on the side of the tank as well um, and I've also, as you can see, been naughty and added a few more corals because I couldn't help myself. I'm, surprised, I'm trying to sell these things, but then I think, nah, I like it too much and end up keeping them for myself. <laughs> but uh, there you go. So as you can see now, I've added a nice piece of red plating Monty there, which one of my local guys uh, bought up to me and swapped a piece of that for another frag of some Zoas, or I can't remember now. It may have been a bubble, a nice... Um, bubble anemone I think it was lovely red one so uh, cheers for that I think that was Martin that bought that up so I've put that in there and that's a little stone there now I've just nibbled it away at the back there as you look I will get in closer in a minute but I've nibbled the back away so it fits nicely in there because that right at the back there is actually it's dead so um, I've placed that little bit of stone a little bit of rock on the top of it there just to hold it in place while it grows and sticks to the other side which is around here I want to adhere to the side because I've got a naughty little crab in there that I've been trying to catch um, and he's like the Mithrax crabs but he's, he's a bit darker you get them when they come in on a live rock and you can always tell the Mithrax crabs because they've got the flat plate ends on their claws and they're normally good little guys if they've got flat plates on the end they're good because they, if you watch them they scrape around and you'll see them passing it to their mouths and eating the uh, debris that then and the bits of algae that they're pulling off the rock so they're beneficial but if you look in there and you see the little crabs and they've got little red eyes on them and they've got little pointy po pointy claws you want to get them out because they're the ones that are going to be destructive and um, and could eat corals so you don't want those guys in this you're gonna have to trap those out you can make an ingenious little pot or something or I've made lots of little different traps to catch things and bristle worms over the years but they're not too too bad to catch if you just don't feed the tank for a while and then you put some uh, you put a little trap in there with a bit of bait in, they'll be in there overnight. So uh, very simple, just like a snail trap would work, a bottle, 
plastic bottle inverted works fine just make sure you lay it on the sand and just rough up the edge with a bit of paper so they get little claws can get a, a grip on the plastic otherwise it's going to be uh, like trying to climb up a window for them it's not going to be very easy for them to get in you can see the mullet there cleaning away beautiful on the substrate which is what mullet do best that's why i love these little guys so much because they're such a clean up crew all the little bits of algae now which have coming up out of the where i've whizzed it around with my tongs is just coming up now and they can pick those little bits off and they'll clean that gravel up make it lovely and white again like I said, it was that turbo snail that caused all the problems. I've pulled the shell out. We had two in there. It's still got one on the back now. And you've noticed I haven't cleaned the back glass. Now, the reason for that is because we don't want to make it too clean in there because our snails are going to starve because they'll have nothing to eat. So I tend to leave the back wall alone um, and maybe just the back of the rocks and stuff like that because they come across the sand onto the rock and they'll clean around the rocks. You can see there's no algae anywhere in there now. Now that it was all surface on the glass, just with that higher phosphate level it just kicks it into gear the extra nutrient in the water with that nice high intense light that is in these little tanks and um, and it'll bloom and it'll bloom away in no time at all now what else can you see in here that I've put in there hmm there's one there and we got one there now we've got two stunning little maxi anemones and they are baby carpet anemones they're a, a, they're a dwarf species they don't get very big and uh, they are, they come in the most amazing array of colors you can think of they're absolutely stunning little guys those little rock flowers they're called as well different different types and um, i got these guys and i got four of those and i thought i'd put these two in just for you guys to have a look Mr. Aptasia is still there. Still haven't got around to getting him. I should have got him this time. I forgot. But never mind. He's not going to create too much havoc where he is. He's not stinging anything yet or touching anything. And we can soon get rid of him. And I've also added a couple of more little zoa colonies for a little bit more uh, a little bit more colour in there in that corner. So we've got the recordias in there. We've got some blue zoas here. We've got the orange. We've also got some blues and oranges there. We've got the... Uh, the green star polyp there, the old ultra green, which is absolutely amazing colour. Starting to creep across the gravel and up the side of the weir as well, which is going to look stunning, like I said, in a few months' time. And um, everything's puffed up and uh, and happy again, which is fantastic. I think it looks really nice with that little bit of that little bit of uh, plate in Monty in there as well. And when it starts getting, when it starts going a bit more, like I said, I've added these hard corals in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little doser on here, and we're going to be dosing some elements in. And, uh, and keeping it up and doing regular tests and we can work out and I'll show you guys how to work out how to put a doser on but like I say if, you're first, if it's your first aquarium I wouldn't go too much in with the hard corals and things go for your, your zoas and your, your green star polyps and um, mushrooms you know the redactis um, recordias, humors, floridas things like that and the polyps obviously on the other side there which is super easy to keep and obviously the the big leather coral, as you can see on the top there, the big golden finger coral, which is absolutely gone berserk in there, and it's on the surface. And I, I was thinking, I was going to take it out, but I thought, no, I'll leave it in there for the time being. And maybe uh, I can sell it off to somebody who wants it. If you're in the South Wales area, pop in and uh, and check it out. Come and check the shop out if you like. It would be nice to see you come down. If you've got a little reef tank, if I can help you guys out with anything, let me know, whether you're here or abroad or wherever. If I can help you out, I will. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this little flipper magnet, magnifier into frame. And I can show you how this thing works. It's absolutely, look at that. That is absolutely amazing, that is. You want to go onto something and see it? Just place it there. And you can get a super close up view of anything in the tank. And, um, let me take you in on that max, that, that little Maxima anemone there, if you can see him there. He's got pinks, a lovely bright red mouth on him. And the recordias at the background as well. Lovely red centres. As with a lot of these corals as well, they're going to really pop over night time. And I've picked the ones that are going to look really nice when we put it onto the blues. The old Polson Xenia there, look, you can have a nice little view of that one. Oh, I absolutely love these little flipper magnet, uh, magnifiers. They're fantastic little tools. They really are. Look at that. Sit down with a coffee in for hours. You can sit there and um, watch all these things pulse away. I think what I'm going to do, guys, on the next video, I'll show you the coral room. This one's running on a little bit long now. I'm not sure if you're all bored. Let me know if you like these longer videos. 
and, um, and I'll make longer videos. Some people like longer ones, some people shorter ones. Um, like I say, I can't please everybody, sadly. But um, if you like these longer videos, drop it in the old comment section below and, uh, and let me know what you think. I think we should have a look at that Monty while we're here. That beautiful green Monty pour there. Look at that. I'll just put the blue light on a minute. And that just blows it up lovely. Look at that. Completely different view. Obviously, it's uh, with the cameras, with the blue light, we do get a strange little effect on there. And it doesn't make the colours show exactly right. I've got a little filter. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the filter on, I think, so you can see the difference between the, uh, between the two. Okay, guys, that's with the filter on. And that's with the filter off. Right little rich tones of blue there from the from the light, but when you put this on this polarizing little lens As you can see it uh, it transforms things takes that blue out and it just leaves you With all these beautiful colors. I Think what we'll do is I'll just have a little look if we can get closer up I'll take you out of the tripod and we'll have a look through this magnifier and see how close we can get to a coral Wow, look at that. That's fantastic. That is obviously as you get closer You can zoom in through the magnifier as well. You can get some crazy shots in there. You can see all the little polyps extended there and that nice little growing leading edge, which is growing all the time. A couple of millimetres a week, I'd say, at the moment. And if we come off of there, we can go down to some of these zoas. Stunning blues on those. And of course, that gorgeous bit of pulsing star polyp there not pulsing sorry look at that stunning little maxima anemones there got beautiful greens yellows little tinges of blue in between as well and we can go and look at his friend which is down here with the lovely red center in there look at that that's absolutely stunning that is i've just put them in so they're just settling in that little foot will go down I just cleaned the substrate away so it could reach the glass, so it could stick to the glass. But look at that, absolutely beautiful. Look at the reds on those zoas now, uh, that are coming out now. Now you can see what I mean there with the reds and the blues all going to pop together later on. It's going to look absolutely stunning, it really is. And the great thing about these little flipper magnifiers is, guys, is because these have got the black filter section down this side here you can drag it to one side and you can twist that up onto the top there and you can hide it away so you've still got the full view if you like to keep things in the water these have got a very very small magnet on the back so it literally comes above the water line as well so you're not too worried about it staying in the water and it stays out of the way and then when you want to have a look at something you can just drag it across the screen as I say, and you can have a little look. Fantastic, thanks very much for sending me those guys. Really do appreciate that. And I'm, I'll stick a link in the description, guys, if you wanna pick up one of these, or the Nano Scraper. If I can find links for you, I'll put them in the description, and you can uh, you can grab yourself some of these. I think it's looking nice now, we're about a month old. That's all it is, guys, about a month old. And um, coming along in leaps and bounds. A little mullet have hidden away now, um, because I've been rooting around in there. I think what I'll do now, is I'll just show you, I'll turn the lights back on. There you go. And it's starting to look tidy now. Now the mullet are gonna come back out. There they come through their little cave, little Bill and Ben, as my daughter called them. The cleanup crew. Fantastic stuff. Anyway guys, I hope you like this I think I'm not sure what part we're on, but it'll be on the on the thumbnail. But I think it could be five. I think it might be five or maybe six. I think I'm not sure. We've got start to uh, right up to this stage now in my playlists. If you want to pop back and have a look at any of the others from setting this little tank up from scratch and all the little things that we've done so far. Um, like I say, don't panic. If you've got a little snail die or something when you go away, just get in there, scrape it all off, give it a nice water change. Drop them phosphates back down and um, and you'll be good to go again. Don't panic and think it's the end of the world because you've got a bit of algae growing on the glass. 
it's not the end of the world. Anyway, guys, as always, Rock Stars, thanks very much for tuning in. Love to have you on the channel. If you're new to the channel, hit the old subscribe button and that notification bell for up and coming videos. And um, I'd love to see you in the next video. Thanks to all you guys who have recently subscribed as well. It means the world. Subs are growing all the time. And uh, it's a joy to make these little videos for you because as long as you're watching them, I'll keep making them. Anyway, take care of yourselves. See you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.